Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, we've got a little something a little different today. I actually, I guess it's new bike day. Uh, I've got a couple of them I want to show you, and I'll let you know what we're going to do. And uh, I guess the first thing I want to do is take you down. And I just pulled in with the last one, and the other one was brought over to me yesterday. So let's go down and look at the one that I just drug in. All right, there you have it. I thought when I saw it online that uh, it was a Yamaha Twin Jet 100. Well, it turns out to be a Yamaha Twin Jet 90. And what's really interesting about it is the speedometer is in kilometers per hour. So I believe this one here was brought into this country by a GI or somebody that was in Japan because from what I can understand what I can find out is this is the the uh, Yamaha twin jet 90 was for the Japanese home market only and it's pretty complete I mean there's a lot of rust on it it's a uh, from what I can tell it's a 1966 model and it's, uh, it is free, it uh, turns over. The guy said he had it running on one cylinder one time, but he just really hadn't had time to mess with it. Uh, I think it's pretty complete. Uh, the carburetors are sitting here, they're kind of loose. We've got a lot of uh, wiring gremlins to sort out. And uh, I've got a little box of stuff here that uh, I think everything's there. There's uh, the air cleaner boot and he looks like he's had the coils off. That's probably what he was working on. Air cleaner and some signal lights. See that that is looks strange to me too because these look like original equipment stuff and of course here in the US we didn't need uh, signal lights on until the 70s and uh, there's just really not much here. So I think most of everything is on the bike. So we just don't know what we're up again until we get it in here on the lift and kind of do some investigation on it. But I just, uh, it's been a while since I've seen one of these. I've never seen one of these, but I know that the 90 twin that was imported into the US, uh, showed up in the 70s, like 70, 71, 72, somewhere in there. And they had, uh, they had a different tank. These here, this tank here is what would have been on possibly a 67 up twin jet 100. So I may be, uh, if you know, some of you folks out there, maybe some of you from Europe or Asia might know uh, what I've got here, uh, drop me a line in the comments section and let me know more about it if you know more about it. Because this kind of threw me that it was kilometers per hour and that it was a 90. And that's uh, right here, Yamaha 90. So it, it's basically the twin jet 100. I'm not sure what the 90 had as far as displacement. I mean the uh, bore and stroke. I don't know what was different. But it's probably not a big enough difference that you couldn't make a hundred out of this. But anyhow, something a little different. Okay, the next item. We've got a, I, I'm thinking it's a 73, uh, 175 Yamaha Enduro. It looks like it may have been painted somewhere along the way. This color blue is what my, uh, uh, the tank on my MX bike was like that, same color. But this one here just, uh, it probably doesn't need a lot. He doesn't want a restoration. Uh, this is the local man that brought this to me. And we're just going to fix what needs to be fixed, get it running, get it reliable. And uh, there's a few cosmetic things that need to be taken care of, but we're not going to paint it or anything. <laughs> But we do have, uh, we've got to find some hardware 
and it's probably going to need some tires but it's uh, the engine's free on this one too it uh, this kickstarter is coming up a little far so i'm not sure what's going on with that uh, those usually have a problem with the kick uh, shaft in there so i may have to go into the side cover there and, and see what's going on there but there again these are all things we'll get to uh, uh, as we go along but this one here is uh, just going to be cleaned up and uh, got it get it running and reliable if you guys would i i got my new microphone so uh, i think it's doing okay so leave me a comment and let me know how it's sounding to you guys my other one just took a crap on me let's get this thing off of here and see what we've got I actually had a chance to use this uh, a few days ago. I was uh, looking at another bike and the guy never called me back. So evidently he must have sold it or, or something. So this basically is the first time I've been able to use uh, my, my rack that I built. Like I said, he had uh, been messing with it, trying to get it to run, had it running on one cylinder, he said. And that's something that happens a lot with these twins, is usually is a seal or something that is uh, causing an issue. But there's quite a bit of rust. This uh, looks like it had come from Oregon originally. Uh, well, not originally. I think it came from Japan originally, but the uh, uh, it had a tag on it from Oregon from 1966 so I think it it's got 5,397 kilometers on it or kilometers I guess that's how they say the chrome it's got a little alloy here on the tank so that's I don't know how in the world I, I know how to fix it but I don't know how to fix it so you can re-chrome or whatever so I don't know I'm gonna have to ask some questions about that if I restore it and looks like it's got some dents here and the chrome would need to be restored on the uh, mufflers and the front fender looks like we've got some uh, forks leaking and probably those rims would need to be replaced these are a 17 inch rim uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the, I don't think the rust bath will take care of that. I mean, it, it'll take care of it, but you're still going to be uh, rusty. And, of course, the luggage rack there. I'm not sure if I ever saw a luggage rack on a uh, YL100, uh, you know, the uh, Twinjet 100. They may have been available, but this looks like this is probably original equipment. And it would, of course, need to be re-chromed also. But except for the one alley on the tank and that one little dent on the muffler over there, uh, really the big thing is we just need to see what's wrong with it and uh, find out what it would cost to have chrome plating done like that. So let me get it up on the lift. Okay, guys, all this wiring stuff 
really bothers me. So we're going to see if we can make heads or tails out of it. See if we've got a pile of junk or something we might be able to do something with. Like I say, I don't see an electric start button on this one, so I don't believe it's electric start. I've got one more here. We have just had the most wonderful rain all night. I don't think we've really had rain since about May. And of course this is August. So it's really a welcome sight. It's, there we come. Yep, this kind of stuff just really bothers me. But so far this is looking sort of normal. So maybe we can get a battery in there and hook up things and see what we can get to happen. I uh, imagine trying to find a wiring diagram for this is just about non-existent. It does give you the color code here at the top of what wires go where. And that's like it, it's on just about all the 12 volt uh, starter dynamo type. Although I don't believe this one is a starter dynamo, it's just a dynamo probably. Wow. I'm going to have to figure out where to start here, I guess. That's all I can do. I've got all this. And that's obviously horn. I've still got to get the coils back up here. First thing I'll probably do is uh, give the coils a test. Make sure they're good. Okay, I'm trying to sort this wiring out and I can see right here I've got a yellow and a brown wire and I've got a yellow and a brown wire right here so that's kind of how I'm starting to look at this so if I hook those up and if these are cut up here I've got two blues two greens two well, let's see. These two browns, solid browns. Then a darker brown right there. So these here must go here somewhere. And I'm not seeing those, those colors. I've got a white there. Hmm. And then I'm thinking that most of this is taillight stuff and this of course probably is brake light. Looks like it's going down to the brake pedal somewhere. And then I've got up here at the switch, I've got a brown, a red, and a blue. 
So that I'm just going to logically kind of look at this and see what I can do as far as wiring goes. Uh, I know it's going to be a 12 volt system. I've got a battery, but you know you kind of want to make sure that you've got things right before you go hooking power up. So let me uh, let me feel this out a little bit more. Okay. Thank God this guy, he saved all the wiring pieces that I can, so far that I've found anyway. So I just, I just hooked this one up. I knew this one would go to the neutral safety light. So I've got that one hooked up and I found the regulator and there was still a, uh, a connector here. So I've still got to find I'm, I'm betting that this red wire is probably going to go to the battery. That's uh, my thought at the moment. I've got a nice crusty one here that's got a lot of battery uh, sulfication inside there. Uh, not real sure what that one's doing yet. But I did, uh, one of the coils has got a brown wire on the negative side. So I'm assuming that we've got another brown wire right here with the same type connector. So we're going to hook that up to the negative side on this coil. You see it's just kind of a process of elimination here. And you know, it looks like they kept all the, the pieces. So, now I'm pretty sure this isn't going to be any good because it looks like it's, uh, there's some sulfication there too. And it, I believe, goes up here inside the box, this hole. But I'm going to leave it out. I think I'm going to fasten it here somewhere where I can get to it in case it catches on fire or something. Isn't that a terrible thing to think about? Uh, but I'm pretty sure this stuff is all going to be uh, tail light and signal light coming out of the back since there's still uh, connectors on here. All this was cut here and all this is cut here. So I'm assuming that that is uh, uh, all going to be spliced back together. I spliced these two here back together. Looks like they're to the uh, uh, rear uh, brake light switch. So let me let me mess with this a little bit more, maybe get the coils mounted up. I, I, I said I was going to check those, but I think I'm going to wait till I get them on board because I my tester is portable enough where I can do that. I'm just trying to get the, the wiring straightened out at the moment. Okay, I think I'm making some hard headway here and I found two more wires, a white and an orange, that have the same type connectors as the brown ones did coming from the coil. So I'm assuming these are going to go to the left and the right. Don't know which one. Don't think it really matters uh, as long as it gets one or the other. It's something we can always swap if we need to. So we'll stick that one there and we'll stick the other one on the other side. Like I said, I'm really pretty sure this thing is going to not be any good. So I'm probably uh, kind of spinning my wheels trying to even hook that up. But that is, let's see, I think I'm seeing everything gone except this brown with a white tracer. And I see one down here. Here's one with a brown tracer or white tracer on brown with a bullet connector. Here's another brown one with a bullet connector and it's just regular brown like all these here. So I don't know whether that one goes into the something there. 
these brown, I'm seeing a flasher and I've got that color browned and a brown with a white tracer going to it. So I'm kind of assuming that must be signal light stuff. And then I've got a dark blue with a uh, bullet connector on one end. I've got a bullet connector right here that doesn't have one going to it. So now we need to figure out where the other end of that needs to go. I've just got the red here. Everything else is hooked up. And I'm assuming this probably was to this red. Should probably should have a fuse in it. And I'm not sure whether that green should be there. But all this stuff here looks like signal wire stuff. So I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. And in all reality, I shouldn't need any of this to, uh, to get fire. I should just need the, uh, the brown, the grounds, and the, uh, the two hot wires going to the coil. So I'll probably isolate all this. I just, I kind of wanted to see if I could sort this out and looks like it's reasonably done. It's kind of a forensic audit type thing, you know, you just have to get in there and see what you got and see what looks the same and, and just play with it. I mean, what else are you going to do, right? Especially if, if I'm right in this situation and this is a Japanese market only bike, where am I going to find a, a, uh, a wiring diagram? And what's really cool is everything up here in the headlight looks really nice. Let me see if I can get you up there. It's really nice and clean in there. Everything seems to be hooked up and, and uh, very clean. So I'll probably trace some of those wires and see what they go to. Most of them are going to be lights. And uh, I've still got a switch to deal with. I've got a brown, and well, that might be one where one of the brown goes. I've got a okay. I got a brown with a bullet connector on it. That one probably goes up here, and that red right here that might be there. And there's. Uh, a dark blue one up here too. So back to it. Okay, let's see what these big old carburetors look like. We'll just see. You know, it's there's just no reason um, to try to start it without cleaning it first you know they're going to be bad the way gas is these days and right there so that's water that's water coming out of there so you know it's not going to work oh it's full of water yeah what a shame Get the other one open too. Yeah, they just the thing was, you know, it was raining when I was over there picking it up and who knows how long it's been setting over there anyway, so I really doubt if much water got in it today because it just was on my car for about a mile. Eh, that one's not so bad, but it's going to take a lot of cleaning out. Oh, well, that doesn't look like the right gizmo. Yeah, the other one is the same too. Probably going to have to knock them out with a little hammer. Mm -hmm. 
I don't like that. You don't want to bang on those too hard. Yeah, let me put some penetrating oil on them and we'll see if we can get them freed up. Okay, I got everything out. It's kind of a surprise actually. So I'm going to put this in the cleaner and uh, then when I get it cleaned up, we'll put it back together. Okay, I got them cleaned up pretty good. They're pretty rough though. A lot of water in this one. It's pitted pretty deep. There's a lot of scales still in there. Probably need to really get in there with a bead blaster or something, but you know, you're afraid to do it because the little holes are so small. Well, let's just, let's put them together and see what we can do. Just one at a time. These things are just very small. It means all the holes are very small. My old big fingers. <clears throat> okay, when we get this done, we'll go over and see if we can get some spark out of it. And if that will happen, then we'll see if we can start it. And he's dinky, 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 dinky. I guess most of these little jets are the, about the same as the others, but. Oops, looks like that thing's so small it's got to, got to go in before the needle jet. Yep, sure does. Just kept running into it. And there again, I got my gunsmithing screwdrivers hollow ground. They really do a nice job. I said how dinky it is yet. <laughs> Man, let's see. Okay, have I got everything in there? I think so. All right.
don't know what these are. They must be. Oh, I don't know. 10, 12 millimeter Venturi's on here. This is going to need some more parts than what we're throwing at it. We're not throwing any at it right now, but eventually it'll it'll need probably a kit or something. Looks like it needs a couple float bowls. I doubt if those things are even available anymore. Eh, what do you think? One and a quarter, maybe? Okay. That's one. Let me knock the other one out. And Tiny keeps going here. These little bitty slides. Got one on. Let's see if I can get this one on. Okay. And we've got our two that they have to come together. Maybe I can get one of them on and slide the other one in. The choke mechanism right here goes into the other one and uh, then it has the lever on it which Uh, connects the two and pulls them both at the same time. Looks like I've got to loosen the nut on it. Alright, get this each one of them tightened up here. They weren't tight when they came in, you know, when I got it. I think he'd had them off, but I don't know when when he had it off. Yeah, you see right here, uh, the one, the rod comes in from the other one. You just connect them, and it, this operates both. Pretty slick, right? Leave this, these up, because here's how you're going to adjust the, the uh, idle on each one of them. All right. I've got the cables hooked up up here to... Uh, the negative side going to the points, negative side of the coil to the points, orange wire goes to the, I, I think it's the right side, and then the uh, kind of gray wire comes to the left side. And all we've got to do is uh, we'll connect a jumper up here to the positive side, and I'll get one on the other one too. Okay, now we uh, will hook our, I've got a fuse block here with a 10 amp fuse, uh, and I've got some rubber here so I don't contact my steel bench, lift, whatever you want to call it, and uh, what I'm going to do, let's see, I've got one end of this just over here on the engine. Uh, this is going to be my ground and that's probably in your way. So I'll hook the ground to the negative side. I've got the positive side set here. The, uh, the two red leads will go to the points left or actually to the 
to the coils on the positive side and the negative side is like I told you before is running down to the points so we should be good but when you do stuff like this you always need to put a fuse in line now I'm going to check one side at a time saw a little spark there but I didn't blow a fuse so let's go around the other side and see what we get Okay, I got it. How about you? All right. Okay, let's, uh, let me get some fuel and we'll see what we can happen, what will happen here. And let's see here if we can get some hoses hooked up. Make a little Y here. Oh boy, it's hard to get on there. I've got my IV here from the Kawasaki. Uh, I know you're not supposed to use the same blood on another person after you've already had it on one, but that's what we're going to do. I got a little left over here. Not sure I'm going to have enough cord to get up there. Nope, I'm not. Not cord hose. I think I got a longer one right here. found a splice to put in there. I don't know. May have to cut it off. Yeah, I think I better. about there otherwise I may not it may not flow back uphill okay just double check everything here and make sure I've got stuff out of the way Okay, we'll put a little pre-mix in the hole. Let's 
same on the other side. some of this, these tools and stuff off here that I don't want to get grease on, oil on. All right, let's let some fuel flow. You see it coming into the carbs there. See any leaks? Hook our battery back up. Both sides now. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Maybe we're crossed. Yep. Well, I didn't have my choke on. Maybe that'll help. Guess not. I think it works the other way, but getting anything there. Okay, I've had a little fire and uh, I saw a little smoke, but it's not happening now. So uh, I think I'm reversed on these. So let me kind of move stuff here. Okay, I just put two brand new plugs in and they're oil fouled. There must be a lot of fuel slash oil, maybe water, down in the crankcase. I can, get a, I can get it to pop once in a while and that's about it. So I'm gonna have to get whatever's in there out. Uh, so that's my next goal. It just immediately fouls the plugs with all kinds of oil. I'm wondering, because all I put in it was a little premix. I'm wondering if he had put a bunch of oil in it. Ooh, yeah, that looks pretty greasy. Oh yeah. 
See all the oil coming out of the header pipe. You can see a little smoke still coming out right here where it's fired a time or two. And there's some water in there too. I'm not sure, but you, there's like bubbles in there. So there's definitely some water in it also. All right, see the oil? And look down here. It fired one time and pushed out a bunch more oil and then, of course, fouled the plugs again. Okay, I'm going to clean the plugs again. Hook up the power. better. Boy. I'm just sure I'm completely fouled again. Yeah. leaking out of there. Runs a little more each time.
loud. What? <laughs> well. My goodness. Look at all that oil that was in there. No wonder the darn thing kept fouling out. Put the new plugs in. Okay guys, there you have it. This one was drowned it worse than the Kawasaki was. I didn't think it was possible. I don't know what came out of there, but probably a half pint or so uh, of just, just straight oil. And I think there was a little bit of water in it too. Uh, maybe some old fuel, but it was pretty oily. So I think it was mostly oil. I'm just wondering if he had somebody him or somebody had uh, stuck a bunch of oil in it to try to keep it from uh, seizing up. This one was in storage for a long time in Oregon. So that's very possible because of the, uh, all the humidity out there. If somebody knew they were putting it up for a while and they shot a bunch of oil in there, that may be what the deal was. But boy, it's hard to get out when you, uh, you gotta get the pipes off you got to get it to fire once in a while just to blow it out. Otherwise, it just keeps circulating in there. So anyhow, we got a new set of plugs in it. It actually sounds pretty good. A lot better with the mufflers on. So I think this one is going to be a fun project. Uh, it didn't take too much to get it this far. 
So we'll just see where we're going to go. I, I'm not sure where yet. But anyhow, hey, thanks for going along on the ride. And we'll see you next video.